that moment, something inside me snapped. For the sake of the children, for both sets of parents and in-laws, I had been continuing my married life with my husband, thinking like that, but I realized it was no longer possible. I've had enough. Please divorce me. When I clearly spoke those words, my husband momentarily showed a surprised expression. However, he quickly returned to his usual disdainful expression, looking down on me as he opened his mouth. Divorce? It's more like a dream come true. A wife like you has no value at all. Are you serious about saying that? Obviously, right? Oh, by the way, you'll be the one supporting the kids on the edge of a cliff. I won't pay child support. Fine, I understand. I readily agreed to my husband's request and left the house. Divorcing my husband and raising two children as a single woman, under normal circumstances, might be unsettling. But I was confident. I believed that leaving the house would lead to greater happiness. I could do anything for the sake of my children. And that arrogant husband of mine, he will eventually fall into hell. I am going to punish him severely for all the times he has done whatever he wanted to do. My name is Kira Peterson, and I am 34 years old. I work for a major furniture manufacturer and am a part-time housewife, also a mother to 5-year-old and a 3-year-old. I am a part of a family of four, including my husband and two daughters, currently living in our apartment. I married my husband, Brian, six years ago when I was 28. Immediately after marriage, I became pregnant, giving birth to my daughters at the ages of 29 and 31. While raising them was challenging, those days were fulfilling as I could feel the cuteness of my own children. Two years ago, when our second daughter, Julia, turned one year old, I returned to work. Balancing childcare and work, I aimed to do my best. Just as I was thinking that, things took an unexpected turn. Due to my return to work, the time spent at home significantly decreased, leading to a reduction in the time available for household chores. The house became messy and meals consisted mainly of supermarket ready-made foods. Although my daughters would eat anything and say it was delicious, the problem lay with my husband, Brian. For some reason, Brian strongly opposed my return to work. Nevertheless, sustaining our two daughters solely on his income was close to impossible. Since I earned more, I had to work hard for the sake of my daughters. However, my husband relentlessly blamed me whenever I resumed work. Why do we have such lazy meals every day? I work from morning till night, tired and exhausted when I come home. Why are you talking like that? I work too, and I do household chores, yet you know. Huh? I have to bow and scrape to my boss, work outside in the scorching heat. It's different from your workplace, which is all laid back. This is terrible. I am juggling work and all the household responsibilities. If you're complaining so much, then why don't you make dinner, Brian? Don't mess with me. Why do I have to do that? Housework is women's work. At the beginning of our marriage, my husband used to say many kind words like, If you have trouble, let me know. And... I'll help with the housework. However, during my pregnancy with our eldest daughter, Millie, when I asked him to do some simple household chores, he made a truly unpleasant face that I still remember. Even when I asked, he never willingly helped out, just grumbling and complaining. In the end, during my pregnancy and right before giving birth, I handled all the household chores. Even after Millie was born, Brian never contributed to childcare. He would return from work, spend time on himself, and sometimes even complained about our daughter's crying. Looking back, our relationship might have been strange from that time. Still, I felt blessed to have a child with the person I loved. 
I thought I was happy, convincing myself of it every day. However, the situation continued to deteriorate. After the birth of our second daughter, Julia, my husband's attitude became progressively worse. When I returned to work, he insisted, women should only take care of the house. Despite financial considerations, I pushed through and resumed work, but it further worsened my husband's mood. Lately, even minor issues would lead him to shout in front of the children. Hey, why is there trash in my room? Huh? I vacuumed just three days ago. Three days ago? Do it every day. You're the one who comes home early and lazes around. I am not lazing around. When I come home, I prepare dinner, give the kids bath. I'm really busy. That's because you have poor housekeeping skills, right? Be stricter with yourself. What if the kids became lazy adults like you? Huh? Not only does he shout, but lately, he's been looking down on me more. The daughters may not fully understand the meaning of their father's outbursts, but they can sense the tension between their parents. I asked him again and again, if you want to say something, do it when the children aren't there. But he would not listen to me. In the end, I was scolded and belittled every day. I could only try desperately to hold back my tears so as not to worry my daughters. Time passed, and for the past few months, peace prevailed, as my husband had continuous overtime commitments. Still, to avoid complaints, I regularly cleaned his room, and during one vacuuming session, I found something under the bed. Hmm? This receipt. The receipt that fell out was about two days old. It indicated two customers and a considerable amount spent. Upon researching the restaurant name on my phone, it turned out to be a high-end French restaurant located a bit away from my husband's workplace. Could it be possible for him to go to such a place with just a colleague? Moreover, two days ago, he claimed to be working late and returned home after midnight. If it's just a casual acquaintance, he could have mentioned it. Something is strange. Even though he claims to be working overtime every day and coming home late, could it be that he's cheating on me, hiding it from me? If that's the case, I need to gather evidence carefully. Considering the children, I need to handle this cautiously. The next day, I applied for a half day off at work and headed to a detective agency in the afternoon. I decided to request a background check on my husband and see how he was doing for the time being. After that, I acted like my casual self to avoid my husband noticing that I was suspicious of him. Two weeks later, when I went to hear the investigation results, as expected, the outcome was bad. My husband was cheating. The other person is a junior colleague at the same company and she apparently has a fiancé. My husband, under the pretext of overtime, was in a romantic relationship with a woman who was about to get married. Some of the photographic evidence given to me by the investigator ranged from walking arm in arm to kissing on the street. In fact, there were even clear pictures of them entering sleazy locations. Despite my feelings for my husband cooling off, I was still shocked. I never thought he was really cheating. I suspected it, but when reality hits you like this, it's quite harsh. But for Millie and Julia, I have to do something. With evidence of the affair, I slowly prepared for what was to come without my husband's knowledge. To be prepared for anything, I started packing the minimum necessities. Over the course of about a month, while steadily making preparations for the divorce, my husband, who knew nothing, continues unruly behavior. You're a failure. You're a stupid wife. Our marriage was a mistake. Etc. 
insults and abuses towards me had become a daily occurrence, tormenting my heart every day. Still, I endured it because I had confidence that I could divorce at any time. But on this day, my husband finally did something unforgivable. While the daughters were playing happily, he slammed the table, raising his voice, and shouted, Hey, you've been noisy for a while now. Don't irritate me on my precious day off. Upon hearing those words from my husband, my younger daughter, Julia, began to cry. Although Millie is not crying, her eyes were filled with many tears. I hugged the two daughters to shield them from seeing their father, and after that, I'm sure my husband glared at me. Oh my god, they were both just playing around. I'm saying it's noisy. Jeez, at least take them outside on the day off. Why do you think only according to your own standards? If you're going to say that, then help with housework on your days off. Why should I? You're a lazy woman who can't handle housework and childcare. Lazy? How can you say such things so casually? Our current life is sustained by the cooperation of both husband and wife. Huh? Don't get carried away. You can live because I'm here. Know your place. My husband is still unaware that I earn more. That's why he can look down on me so confidently, even in front of our children. Everything has become so indifferent, and I've lost the will to argue. Seeing me like this, my husband, perhaps thinking I'm intimidated, starts speaking ill of me. Finally, he says to me, Marriage with you is a dark history for me. Be grateful that I even married a worthless woman like you, you trash. At the moment, something inside me snapped. For the sake of my children, our parents and in-laws, I had thought that enduring married life with them was the right thing to do. But now, I realized it was impossible to continue. If I stayed with this person any longer, I would lose myself. My deterioration would inevitably affect my daughters. I had to end this relationship for good. I've reached my limit. Please, let's get a divorce. When I clearly stated this, Brian looked surprised for a moment. However, he quickly returned to his usual disdainful expression, looking down on me as he opened his mouth. Divorce? It's more like a dream come true. A wife like you is worthless. Is that really what you think? Of course. Oh, by the way, make sure you support the two brats on your own, okay? I won't pay any child support. How can you speak about your own daughters like that? They're just noisy brats, stating the facts. I've never had any affection for them. I see. Understood. Realizing that staying with them any longer wouldn't bring happiness, especially for my daughters, I decided to take action. I grabbed the luggage I had prepared in advance and left the house with my daughters. I handed him the pre-signed divorce papers and without hesitation, he smoothly filled them out. Divorcing my husband and raising my children alone, under normal circumstances, would be a cause of concern. However, I was convinced, if I left home, I could be happier than I am now. I believed that, for the sake of my children, I could strive for anything. And that arrogant husband of mine would inevitably fall into hell. Just wait and see. I'm going to punish him severely for all the times he's done whatever he wanted to do. Vowing to take more revenge on my husband, I left home with my daughters in tow. On the way, I submitted the divorce papers at the city hall, cutting ties with my husband and headed to my parents' house. My father and mother were greatly surprised when I returned home with a large suitcase. Hey, what's going on all of a sudden? While my mother put the girls to bed, my father spoke to me. I explained the events with Brian so far in the order. In front of my parents, 
Brian was a good husband, so my father seemed surprised at his true nature. But they soon realized the real meaning of my return to my parents' house. My father looked me straight in the eye and said clearly, So, I just need to take care of the paperwork. Yeah, I want you to prepare the documents. Got it, I'll start on it tomorrow. Actually, the apartment where we as a couple had been living was one of my father's properties. Although it was technically rented under Brian's name, my father had been covering the rent, and we were living there rent-free. However, there was no point in continuing to bear the rent for a man who was neglecting his family due to infidelity. So, I asked my father to officially demand rent payments from my husband. Having gathered evidence for the affair, I decided to claim compensation and child support through a lawyer. With this, I made preparations for the divorce while commuting from my parents' house to work. Two weeks later, thinking that some action might be happening soon, my phone, as expected, lit up. When I checked the screen, the caller was indeed my ex-husband, Brian. Yes? Hello? As I answered the call, Brian seemed flustered as he spoke. Uh, hey, what's going on? I received some weird documents, something about compensation. Ah, it seems they arrived safely. That's the compensation for your affair, you know? What? I didn't cheat or anything. Just so you know, the evidence is already gathered, so there's no escaping from it. And soon, you'll receive another set of documents. Huh? Another set of documents? You haven't forgotten, have you? Starting from now, you'll be responsible for paying the rent for that room. What? From Brian's reaction, it seemed he hadn't realized it. He asked me with a raised voice. Wait a minute, rent? The house was given to us by your father. That's not true, right? My father just lent it to us out of goodwill. This is... So, as long as I stay in this house, I have to pay the rent? That's right. I assume you understand, but considering the good location and relatively recent construction, the rent isn't cheap. Can you afford it with your salary? Is it really that high? Brian... Perhaps after checking the market on his phone, lamented in the background. There's no way I can afford this. It seemed that he had finally realized his situation. And in a desperate tone, he began pleading. I'm breaking up with my mistress, so come back to me. Let's start over again. Desperately seeking help, he pleaded, but I firmly rejected him. Start over? Don't be ridiculous. After all the hurt you caused me and our daughters? How dare you say such things? Do you truly understand what you've done? I can't forgive you for neglecting our family more than any affair. W well I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize, so please. Huh? What value does your apology have now? Regardless of words you say, nothing resonates anymore. I have no intention of restarting anything with you as a couple. Th that's... We were at least a married couple, a family, right? Who said to our daughters, I've never had any affection for them? I became resolute with those words. You have no qualifications to be a father. You're also a bad influence on our daughters. Never involve yourself with us again. Emotions exploded, and towards the end, I think my voice trembled. Even so, I decisively hung up the phone. Later, Brian apparently moved out of the apartment and into another. Unfortunately, his relationship was exposed to his mistress's fiancé, and he faced another compensation claim. Ironically, the woman involved in the affair chose to reconcile with her fiancé, not Brian. All that remained for Brian 
was compensation for two people and child support until our daughters reached adulthood. It's probably a matter of time before his affair is exposed at work. It's almost impossible for him to continue his carefree lifestyle. Even so, I feel no sympathy. I hope he suffers as much as possible from now on. On the other hand, I am happily spending my days with my daughters with the support of my parents at home. The commute takes a bit of time, but there's nothing more reassuring than the support of my parents. My parents greet my daughters with smiles every day. The smiles of my daughters are increasing, and I am convinced that my choice was not wrong. I am grateful to my parents for welcoming us so warmly, and I want to continue pouring lots of love into my daughters in the future.